We all know how important reputation is in this industry, so it's easy to see why more and more pros are turning to Anderson to build their projects and craft their legacies. Anderson has earned the trust of pros time and time again for over 120 years. They will work with you to build more efficiently, stay on budget, and earn more referrals by providing high-quality products and support, making your installs easier and confidence stronger. See how Anderson can help you craft your legacy at TrustAnderson.com. Uh, Jeff uh, sent us a, a great photograph. Uh, thanks for writing in, Jeff, and sending that photo. He writes, uh, Dear FHB Podcast Crew, I had to share this photo to get your thoughts on what this HVAC approach might be. It is a spec house under construction in Climate Zone 4 at an undisclosed location with a name withheld to protect the guilty or possible in possibly innocent. The house has seven mini split condensers outside uh, installed along the one side of the house. It's probably about 1,600 square feet, including the walkout basement. I expect it's three bedrooms and two baths based on other new construction in the area. Two of the seven units are larger than the other five, so it appears some de design was done or at least some thought on sizing the units. Our friend lives next door, so she gets to enjoy this view and likely in the noise when most or all of them are running at one time. Is there a case where this makes sense from a financial or building science perspective to install seven mini splits for a house this size? Thanks for the insight, Jeff. Well, the, the picture that Jeff sent tells the whole story here. Uh, what do you guys think of this approach? Uh, what about what's going on here, Randy? Uh, I think Ian should start this one. <laughs> All right, Ian, he's, he's, he's got a really well, good opinion on this. <laughs> well, so this this is uh, a great this opportunity. This is how you eat and cool, I should point out, right? This is this, largely how, yeah. This is, but this is also a good time for my yearly public service announcement of approaching other contractors' work with curiosity and assuming positive intent and not just uh, automatically assuming somebody's an idiot or doesn't know what they're doing. Though that may be the case, I don't think that's a good place to start. Uh, in the case of this one, uh, in my first reading of the letter, I missed that it was a spec house. So my mind immediately went to other uh, builds that I've been a part of that had strange mini split setups. And one of the ones that I mentioned to Randy was a home that had its own server system in it. And because that server room needed to be permanently air conditioned, that room did need its own uh, mini split head and therefore its own outdoor condenser so that it wasn't subject to the other units going to heat. Uh, another idea that I had was there may be some occupant sensitivities uh, where you have uh, people who have sensitivities to different levels of humidity in different bedrooms. Uh, being in zone four, you may have different temperature sensitivities where maybe you have one member of the house who does want to heat their uh, bedroom in the shoulder seasons uh, where everybody else is fine having nothing going on. Uh, another idea that I had was because of the walkout basement, maybe you wanted uh, individualized control for that space if it's a not often used space like a rec room. Maybe you wanted to be able to turn that off. Another idea I had was uh, in that area of North Carolina, I have some family and I know that they all have mini split systems in their garage uh, to cool and dehumidify their garages. So I think there's seven, probably excessive. I could come up with reasons to maybe have five, uh, but some of that's based on my assumption that being a newer build, it's more of an open plan house. Uh, if it is kind of an older style, you have a room that's the kitchen, a room that's the living room, and not much flow between the two of them. I think you could speculate uh, having a head in each room. Is it efficient? Probably not. Does it look like they're using any of the high-end types of mini splits, like the Mitsubishi one that I have? It doesn't appear to be, so there may be some penalty there as well. What do you think, Randy? I mean, uh, we've always heard that a one-to-one, -one, one head to one outdoor unit is going to uh, modulate the best. Uh, is, is this a case of just trying to have the right conditioning in, in individual spaces to uh, uh, have some control? 
It could be, but let's take a bedroom for an example. Let's say the, the homeowner likes to keep that room, their, their door closed all the time. And that's the reason why they wanted a dedicated unit in there. Bedrooms are typically pretty small. They don't need that much heating and cooling. Um, and to find a unit that's small enough, I mean, they, these will modulate down, but to even get close to the sizing, you might only need a quarter ton or maybe a third of a ton. And you're probably putting a one ton unit in or maybe a... Yeah, a, I have a, a 9,000 BTU unit in one of the bedrooms at my house and it it's way oversized for that. Yeah. And we knew that going into it, but felt that, the arrangement of the rooms called for the bedroom to have its own. Yeah, they're they're. T I mean, have have uh, Jeff Rudd jump over the fence and go over and start reading all the nameplates off the units to try to figure out sizing. You know, on the nameplates, it'll tell you at 24, 36, 48, 12, something like that. One of those numbers in there. That's the size. That's the the, the BTU output of the of the unit. It'd be interesting to see how how many BTUs total are are capable inside that house. It's got to be five tons is, is my guess. <laughs> at least. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Join us this September 18th and 19th at the beautiful Endicott College campus in Beverly, Massachusetts for the Fine Home Building Summit, where the best minds in residential design and construction come together. This premier two-day event is all about elevating the way we design, build, and run successful, inspiring construction businesses. You'll hear from some of the most respected leaders in the industry as they share insights on the future of home building. You'll experience engaging sessions, interactive roundtable discussions, supplier exhibits, and hands-on networking. We'll also be recording a fine home building podcast live from the summit floor. Head over to summit.finehomebuilding.com to register today. Use the promo code FHB podcast for $50 off the two day all access ticket. Can't wait to see you there. I was thinking about this and I was uh, recalling what Chris Hughes, who did a fantastic article for fine home building on HVAC system commissioning. And he said to me, it's all about airflow. And if you are in a bedroom and hot and the mini split is in the living room and you want to close the door, you have no solution. Uh, you, you are going to be hot or you're going to open the door. Um, so my guess is they're just trying to make people comfortable. And uh, I don't know. It's I think one, one thing I would add is this is probably not a cheap spec home builder because Randy, that this system's got to system, be right? really expensive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not just mm -hmm. the system itself, but the the size panel needed to run all of those, presumably at the same time. Yeah. Uh, presumably on full blast. That's a lot of draw. Um, yeah. I, so you also I had a back and forth with the uh, letter writer, Patrick, and you mentioned that... Uh, you had recently heard that there are subsidies that are based on the quantity of heads that are installed, which uh, could be another factor, though the letter writer uh, disregarded that as he trashed his local utility. Yeah. So in, in New York State, I had a conversation with an installer who pointed out that you get a rebate on every mini split and there's no limit to how many you put in a house. And I'm guessing the intention of the, you know, rebates was not to sell more mini splits, but to provide, you know, an incentive to, for folks to use this high performance technology. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it, it, in this case in New York, uh, it was, uh, affordable to put in six, seven mini splits to heat and cool this house and uh, solve the air delivery problems that Chris Hughes and others talk about. Mm -hmm. I'm curious what listeners think about this. Uh, you know, to me, it seems like ducted mini splits are a great solution um, for this problem of bedrooms with uh, low BTU needs. And um, you can better uh, match the loads. They modulate sim similarly to um, the, you know, wall mounted cassettes or ceiling mounted cassettes, but, uh, I've they're found expensive. The, the, I've found the cost of the engineering behind the ductwork to be cost prohibitive at times. Yeah. Uh, and depending on when that choice was made in the design of the home, if you haven't designed the structure of the home to accept ductwork, as I did with mine, it's super challenging to put that ductwork anywhere in an efficient way 
other than just slapping a bunch of big soffits all around the house to carry the duct work. Or yeah, worse, I mean, put it in the in the attic like everyone else does, right, right? in, in uh, cooling climates. Yeah, and you have some zoning, too. For instance, if with this basement area, you're not going to want that full air conditioned in the, yeah. in the summertime. Yeah. You know? Randy, I would take advantage of you being here and, and ask you, how often do you see issues where people take something that's a good idea, like mini splits, and, and take it to kind of an extreme that no longer makes sense? And, you know, maybe it's a lack of complete understanding or assuming that something like a mini split is a, a packaged solution. Yeah, I, I've actually got a phone call I got to return today on a, on a person that put in a uh, in-floor heating system. And they said that their electric bill is running seven to $800 a month, and they think Whoa. they have a problem with it. They don't know what it is. Um, of course, that's why I'm going out there to try to figure out, hey, what, what's drawing? Is it the heating system or is it something else? But, uh, yeah, that's something that I run into quite often, something. Best How are you going to track that down, Randy? Are you going to put an amp clamp on the on the electric mm-hmm. panel? What, yeah, yeah, I'll be digging in their electrical panel to try to figure things out. Yeah. Oh boy, keep us posted. That's an exciting <laughs> uh, d- mystery there. That's real. And what's the electric rate to, to have a seven or eight hundred dollar <laughs> electric bill? Well, how how much? What's the kilowatt? Out? We're less than you guys are. Fifteen cents a kilowatt. Yeah, that's where we are. Yeah. You're out out east. I'm sure you guys are probably twenties, twenty cents, twenty five cents. It's at there. least that, Randy. It could yeah. be thirty. I quit looking because it's just sad. 